The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, my name is Jillian Schaefer and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Meet Quality and Compliance Regulations with Acumatica Cloud ERP, presented by Ralph Kubek of eWorkplace Apps. A little housekeeping before we get started. Next slide, please. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment after the presentation to answer our one survey question. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you software and industry knowledge, tools and support whenever you need it. We've invited eWorkplace apps here today because they are the industry experts on quality management. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Ralph. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate everyone joining. Uh, and again, we're going to be going through quality management for Acumatica. Um, and I'm Ralph Kubek. I'm Director of uh, Sales and Services uh, for eWorkplace Apps. Uh, I'm joined by Ablash, uh, who is Director of Product Development for our group. Uh, Kabir is also going to be on the line a little later. Uh, he gets involved in uh, business relationships and uh, some other management areas. So we can now kind of link voices to faces. Uh, the focus is we first of all want to go through uh, who eWorkplace Apps is, uh, then an overview uh, in a PowerPoint to describe what we put together for Acumatica, and then we'll spend some time in the product uh, actually showing you how it functions within a Acumatica from a cloudy aspect, and then is just indicated there'll be some questions and answers. So first of all, eWorkplace Apps, uh, we're a spinoff of Batchmaster. Many people know that for 30, 35 years, uh, Batchmaster has been a leading provider of software, uh, particularly related to process manufacturing and quality management solution. Uh, we've created a relationship with Acumatica that's over a year old, uh, and we put together a team of about 30 individuals, uh, subject matter experts as it relates to developers, business process consultants, implementation people, business analysis, all within uh, something that we call Acumatica's uh, center of excellence, so we could be be bringing solutions into the Acumatica marketplace. Uh, today, we're going to focus in on the quality management solution. Uh, there is going to be some sessions um, in the future regarding what we're doing in terms of process manufacturing. Uh, first of all, just uh, why QMS? Um, before people invest in the product, uh, they need to know there's going to be a payback. We've really seen over the years in our background uh, three particular areas to focus in on. Um, there's the internal piece, uh, there's the customer satisfaction piece, uh, and then there's the regulatory and government compliance piece. Internal control needs, um, in this day and age, people need the ability to set standards uh, in terms of what needs to be tested, how to record the results, as well as evaluate the results and material. In many cases, in our solution, material is either quarantined or gated. Quarantine meaning when it comes uh, in off the truck, uh, when it comes in off the assembly line, we need to quarantine that. We need to prevent it from being sold and used. Feeding operation just means that something's moving from one work cell to another. We need to be in a situation of limiting that until quality does its particular task. Uh, there also needs to be a nonconformance and corrective action process. It's great when quality works, but when it um, suffers a little bit, we need a formal process by which we can handle that internally. Uh, we need to integrate uh, ERP with the overall inspection and process, and then vendor performance is very critical, right? We need to judge vendors on a variety of um, methods. One of them, the QMS helps out on in terms of how are they performing in terms of quality. There's then the customer side. Uh, in some cases, it's very basic related to providing certificates of analysis and related documentation. In other situations, there's cases where there's actually specific tests and inspections that need to be performed before shipping. Uh, maybe you're dealing with uh, Costco, 
and there have some requirements in terms of you validating how the truck was loaded, how were the pallets stacked, uh, maybe even checking some expiration dates on particular products. Um, also, in those tests might be different than if you're sending something to Walgreens, and we'll go through how we handle that. Uh, there's also situations that some customers want you to have a formal process if there is a non-conformance issue, uh, so we support that aspect. Industry, regulatory requirements, um, some as basic as recall and traceability reports uh, that we will talk through. In many cases, there's a need to have digital records. Who did what when as it relates to test results? Uh, and then there's a formal process to digitize uh, the aspect of NC and COPPA. Uh, FDA certifications, uh, good manufacturing practices, right, are holistic in nature. It's just not what the system is gonna do for you. Uh, there's other things surrounding the systems, but our system can play a role in uh, entities trying to reach those certifications. In fact, there's some quotes uh, that you'll see a little later in the presentation, and hopefully we'll show you what those areas could be. In terms of the quality management solution for Acumatica, uh, we've talked about our heritage, but it's important to note that this is natively built within Acumatica, all on its XRP platform. So what we've done is we've taken the IP that we've had over our past background and now we're applying it. So this is a new product, all specifically engineered using the Acumatica tool set, same database, fully integrated into the Acumatica process. Uh, it's customer validated, which is part of the process that you need to go through within Acumatica. It's also been certified uh, by Acumatica as a solution. Um, the early focus of our solution, and we're gonna talk about this today, is testing, inspection and checklists, NC and CAPA, how we handle ALQ and sampling, certificates of analysis, uh, we're tracking some tool details, also vendor performance with a focus in on, uh, again, the quality results. Over a period of time, this quality suite is gonna be built out uh, so it handles true vendor performance, education and training, uh, and auditing function uh, in safety and welfare, so those will all be handled. Uh, as this product continues to be rolled out within the Acumatica world. Um, we've talked about industry certifications. I mentioned that in the beginning of why QMS. These are all the standards that, uh, not all of them, but standards that apply to specific industries. And Acumatica has users in all these industries and Acumatica combined with our solution, combined with other processes within an organization will help people reach the various certification and compliance requirements in these particular areas. Um, it's a system within a system. Uh, I've been involved in consulting for a long time, started out in a CPA firm in a consulting environment and, and managed a consulting practice. And we need to move from the left, right? Many years ago, quality was that room in the middle of the office. Uh, you periodically get a call that we have a quality solution that needs to react. What we need to do today, and hopefully what you'll see is the slide over on the right, right? Operations, quality, all sitting in the same room, all dealing with issues on an online interactive basis. A system within a system for within Acumatico, I've already spoke about how we develop this product on the uh, XRP platform. Those are all the tools that we have. You'll see some of how those tools affect QMS. We then have the wrapper of Acumatica ERP, and then inside that, our core Acumatica solution again, which we're gonna be diving into uh, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, a couple of recent quotes, again, um, all software needs to be surrounded by good operating procedures, but uh, there's users of Acumatica and QMS uh, that have been able to obtain uh, good M good GPM standards. Um, before I get involved in the details, uh, it's always sometimes good to uh, look at a map, so to speak, and tell a story about what people will begin to see. So we're gonna spend some time in the setup uh, of the module. Uh, we had to build an infrastructure, uh, that indicated what tests are we going to perform, how are we going to perform those, uh, what sampling might we, we use, uh, how we are going to evaluate test results, right? The basic things that someone in quality begins to have. In some cases, there's third-party systems. In some cases, these are all Excel-based tools right now. We then need to associate those at the item, item class level, bill material, so that we know what tests need to perform on what items. You'll see that we vary. Um, you'll see when we get into quality control, I've already talked a little bit about when you're shipping to customers, maybe the tests are different. 
as well as you have different vendors, right? You have your primary vendor, your secondary vendor, vendor coming off promotion, and you'll see how we can begin to have different sampling plans, different criteria for each one of those. We also support stability testing, stability testing, particularly in um, food and farm and some industries, uh, right? Items over a period of time might uh, degrade in nature or potentially you're holding back samples and every 30, 60, 90 days, every two years, you might need to resample those products to make certain that they're still viable in meeting uh, requirements and we support that. The triggers, when does someone want to give, use quality control? When something's received, when something's produced, both in line as it moves from cell to cell, as well as it comes off the assembly line, when something's shipped. Uh, we do support kit assembly and within Acumatica, one step black box type manufacturing approach. Ad hoc, we just might want to inspect something, right? Someone ran into it with a forklift, it looks damaged, we need to look at it, maybe it's part of an RMA process. And I already spoke about uh, time based stability. Key within our system is a QC order. It's the transaction that will generate, we'll alert QC uh, that something needs to be inspected, and then we'll go through a process of entering results. We'll do the evaluation for you. If it passes, it goes into inventory. Some people reminded me it might go back into production, right, because uh, it's just a phase. If it fails, we'll talk through how we, gen we can generate a uh, nonconformance transaction. That transaction could also generate a, a, a corrective and preventive action workflow that we'll talk through a little bit today. And then out of this comes the fact that it goes into material review boards. Again, within core Acumatic, you'll make some decisions. Do I rework it? Do I scrap it? It might go back into inventory as a regraded product. And I mentioned in terms of customer service and engineering, uh, there's various tools within Acumatic in terms of CRM that handles part of the process, but in some cases, the nonconformance uh, CAPA transaction is uh, generated by customer service or engineering. So hopefully that gives people a, um, a good look at, number one, who we are, uh, how we integrate within Acumatica, and then a basic flow of the product. And now I'm going to go actually into the product. Uh, Abolash, could you see an Acumatica screen? We can from my end, Ralph. Okay, good. Any questions so far before we get into the actual product itself? And we haven't had any come through yet. Okay. So I'm first of all going to go into setup. A lot of features, screens are going to change, uh, numbering schemes are going to change. But I really want to start out at the bottom here where my cursor is, which is one of the pillars uh, of Acumatica and our QMS system. Uh, locations, I call them bins, but in Acumatica they're called locations. Uh, we use locations as our quarantine process uh, that I've already talked about and I'll explain further. Why are we using bins? Because within Acumatica, at the bin level, you could determine whether something could be sold, something could be used. You could determine whether those items um, can be looked at or should be viewed as part of MRP calculation. Uh, you could use those items to determine whether uh, they're available or not for sale. So within all that infrastructure, we built it on to or on top of the Acumatica bin structure. So number one, we quarantine the item and then we uh, prevent people from moving it. And then parts of core Acumatica allow, uh, further allow things to not be sold or moved, et cetera. So that's one of the cornerstones of, of QMS. Another cornerstone is sampling plans, right? We're in situations of being able to create samples. Uh, sample sizes, so we have the capability of indicating to, from quantities, and then how many samples we're going to take. The second major pillar within QMS is uh, tests, right? A test is what we're going to do to a particular item. So this is just an example where someone needs to take uh, a test. So we have a test name, we have a test description. We then have three different ways to evaluate. Um, a test, numeric, range of values, alphanumeric could be a color, et cetera, that we need to pull in, Boolean, Boolean being yes or no. We then have three different ways. You could see here two different ways that we could category test, test category, test method uh, for grouping, for reporting, and analytical purposes. We then do have a setup for QC tools. 
So the tools that are going to be used during quality process, you could set up. You could begin to indicate their status, active, on hold, and calibration, retired. You could denote next calibration dates, last calibration dates, so that we could be in a situation of using some of the Actimatic controls to warn or prevent people from doing things should a tool be outside of scope. If it's a numeric value, what unit measure are we going to be measuring this item to? And then I don't want to say this is planning, but right, there's some tests that take a few minutes. There's some time, tests that take days and hours. So we do allow you to indicate by test how long something might take. So if this is a test that's going to take three days and we're shipping something on Friday, uh, there can now be reports and information coming to the QC people that they need to begin to work on this today. We also have steps. So we have the capability of indicating what we're going to do because we want to control not only the test, but also before, during, and after that test. So again, one of those pillars is the setup of a particular test. I'm not going to save any of those transactions for right now. Next is something that we call quality control. I'm sorry, look to the wrong box. Inspection plans. Inspection plans. Oh. Oh, I see, I'm, I'm at the end of this list. So an inspection plan is a list or a group of tests that we put together, and I can explain this as in a template format, which will be further explained as we move forward. But we're able to go in and indicate that we have a test, a test plan ID, what a description is. Uh, we have the capability of tracking revision numbers as well as effectivity dates. Revision effectivity dates, not only for the purpose of when tests might end or start, but also in some cases, right, you might test something one way in the summer, a different way in the winter. This is where we begin to take those tests. We then begin to associate them or regroup those together. We'll talk about severity levels in a second. If it's a numeric test, this is where we put in our range of values, the minimum, target, and maximum value that we're going to begin to associate this with. If it's an alphanumeric or test or pass-fail, we indicate what those defaults are. I indicated three different ways to analyze tests, and this is the third test, the test group that we associate at this level. And again, because this is a template, right, we had a generic test, we now apply particular values to it. We could also begin to enter and change the lead time, because again, this test might take two days for one item, uh, three days for a different one. Important, not only do we wanna take test results, we also wanna evaluate the results. So we have the concept of severity levels. Uh, we, as a default system, have major, medium, minor. You could begin to add others. We then have three different test criteria, rigorous, moderate, or flexible. Uh, think of purchasing. We have rigorous testing, maybe for a new vendor, maybe for a vendor coming off probation. We might have moderate testing for a standard, uh, partner, start, standard vendor. We are able to then indicate the amount of defects, how many samples, we're going to either need to pass or need to fail. So that as we're evaluating this, this is the basis of us evaluating whether the samples we're taking on a particular purchase order are going to pass or fail. So those are the main elements of setup. Uh, we'll talk through a little bit later uh, some idea of test groups and inspection plans, but let's see where the rubber hit, hits the road, so to speak. So I'm gonna go into the item master file. And I'm going to call up a shell. When you do turn on Acumatica QMS, you'll see a menu choice for testing. First of all, we're beginning to identify uh, if this item does require QC or not. The triggers we've talked about, this is where we begin to denote what we want to do when we receive, when it's shipped, when it's produced, ad hoc or kit assembly. We then take one of those templates that we just talked about. We then link it to this particular item. We then can indicate whether it's rigorous, flexible, or moderate from a result criteria, what type of inspection we're going to do, 100% or sampling, and if it's going to be sampling, we associate uh, the sampling plan to it. At the bottom, all of those tests that we set up are going to be there. You can notice this one uh, has an alphanumeric value as well as a pass-fail. Again, think of this as a template. Think of this as refining this process. So I have a uh, particular set of paint uh, that I'm looking at. 
right? I have a test that needs performed every time. Uh, I have the same results or same tests for a group of items, but here I could go in and indicate that for this particular item, right? If this lower value needs to be 60, not the 63 that was there. So we have that capability to go in and create those tests to these specific for a particular item. You can notice we have the capability here of adding or deleting additional tests if we so wanted. On the PowerPoint, I indicated that testing is not always the same. So we do have the capability for a vendor to indicate that we have a vendor specific test plan. Again, I've talked about primary vendor versus secondary vendor. Even the change could be maybe we're testing all vendors the same, uh, but when it's a new vendor or a vendor coming off probation, we're gonna rigorously test that item, meaning we're gonna not allow him to have as many phasers as if we're gonna be flexible testing. Same thing as customer plan. This is where we, by customer, can begin to differentiate what type of test, what's the result criteria we're gonna use to evaluate the results for uh, any particular vendor. Hopefully, you have a good idea of how we've built the infrastructure in terms of tests, test plans, result criteria sampling. We then went through for the purpose of receiving inspection and production inspection and how we've linked those test plans to an item. I do want to take one step up uh, within Acumatica. Item classes are very important. So if we go into the item class setup within Acumatica, we see we have a control tab same ability to attach tests the same way we just talked about at the item level. The reason why we do this at the item class level twofold, when there is startup, you can see we have the capability of applying the test plan to all the items within that particular category. So they're all gonna be tested the same. Again, we might vary the results, but the test plan is gonna be the same. The other important piece of this is that when an item is entered into inventory, a new item is created, it will inherit the traits or the tests for that particular item. So now that we have the infrastructure built, we have things attached uh, to a particular item, let's go through to see what effect this has on purchasing. So I'm gonna write a purchase order within Acumatica. Number of different ways to write a purchase order in Acumatica. Uh, this is the way I write them. And I'm gonna go in and choose a vendor. I'm then going to uh, buy an item. I'm going to pick this item called Shell. I'm going to order just one uh, of these items. I'm going to take this off hold and I'm going to approve this. The reason I'm just ordering one is I don't, for purpose of today, I just want to be able to show you how we take uh, readings and record things and I don't want to get involved in entering a lot of different data for different samples. I'm now going to do the PO receipt, typical ERP transaction so far, right? I ended up indicating that I want to write a purchase order. This is a lotted item. So because we talked about how we do stability testing, we require an expiration date. And then the other thing I need to do is go ahead and indicate that I have a re vendor reference number. All standard functionality within Acumatica, any particular ERP system. But this is where quality really takes over. Uh, we have a warehouse This was bought into this wholesale warehouse. It was our, e, our uh, WMS system says it should be put into this bin S2. We've talked about wanting to quarantine items, right? Prohibit, prevent this item from being used until something's done. So the system is automatically kept it within that warehouse. And then based upon that setup screen we use, it's now put into this quarantine location. Person could see that quality is required and you could see we've generated a QC order called 507. If this is inline inspection, in other words, I'm the receiver, it, and I also do the QC inspection. I could use this hyperlink to get directly down into the inspection, but that's not how we operate with any workplace apps. Uh, so I'm gonna go to my dashboard. Uh, all throughout Acumatica, dashboards are highly configurable. Uh, these could begin to change colors as it relates to alerting me that I have a QC order, a lot of trend and information. But you could see most importantly on my grid, I now see that I generated that purchase order and I need to create a QC order. This is our transaction. So we created that order. Top part of this is a header screen, uh, the order number, details regarding the vendor, the item, how we're gonna be having result criteria. We do allow you to use uh, user-defined fields, attributes as 
Acumatica calls those, because there might be situations that as I'm doing this test, along with recording test results, which we'll get to in a few minutes, uh, I also might have some static information I also include. So we allow you the capability of doing that. We also have the capability, because of the core Acumatica functionality in terms of document management, being able here to attach documents, attach pictures, again, anything else that might relate to this particular QC order. At the bottom of the screen is where we begin to enter the results. I purposely am moving my cursor because from a security aspect, there's a number of different roles within QMS. One of them is a QC analyst, QC analyst being a person who can enter in results. So I'm gonna go into uh, this box and I'm gonna indicate that, you know what, this wasn't read, so I'm gonna fail this transaction. And I'm gonna indicate that this is numeric and it's one, so that did pass. I'm gonna go in and indicate that this failed and only came in at 165. And I'm gonna indicate that this is true. People are getting immediate notification uh, that something has passed or failed. Uh, there is a variety control here. I could see this unit pass. I'm gonna purposely go ahead and fail this because I entered in the wrong value. It was actually supposed to be 11. There is a complete vendor history uh, of this. So we as people uh, who have the capability to enter and change tests, we have a complete history of those events. You could see how I maneuvered things from being passed to being failed. You could create a number of alerts or triggers off those. So that's the first uh, process that someone needs to go through in QC. Be alerted that I need to test something and then put in those results. Next phase of our system is that we've talked about evaluating results. We've talked about result criteria, how many samples we're taking, failures, et cetera. I purposely failed this one. And this is gonna look at, again, the samples we took, the amount of samples we took, what tests failed, uh, how severely those tests are supposed to be rated, and eventually this test particularly failed. I do have the capability if I had the security to override this, but I'm gonna keep it as failed. The next action we need to take is that item is sitting in a quarantine location, probably not where we wanna keep it forever. So I'm gonna take this item and since this item was rejected, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I wanna move this into uh, our, our material review board solution and I'm gonna post this. This transaction you would do even if something passed, you would go in and you would move it out of the quarantine location and push it into the bin where it belongs. You also see we have scrap. Uh, scrapped is there for most of our clients' cases, some uh, items, right? I have 10 samples. I need to do some destructive testing. So I have the capability of how many did I accept, uh, how many items did I scrap, right? Because I destroyed those as part of the testing process. We now have known this has failed. Significant capability here to using the core capabilities of Acumatica to print release labels, quarantine labels, all type of labels. I'm gonna take a little bit of a right turn. Uh, this testing is done, uh, but we wanna go through what happens in some cases, right? There's an NC that now needs to be created uh, for that item. You could automate that process. A dashboard exists in, in terms of NCs, but I'm gonna drill into this transaction right from this screen. We now have a workflow that uh, defines the NC details, the root cause analysis, the actions taken, brings over all the information on the test in terms of what happened. We have a digital record. We've talked about the ability to digitize and acknowledge who did what transaction. So I'm done with that transaction. I'm gonna go ahead and add a root cause analysis, some default information, right? This is just indicating that it was a chemical reaction, was a problem. I'm actually gonna add another one, just indicating uh, there was rust on it, right? whatever details that someone needs to accumulate and compose. Again, digital record indicating I now have the capability of indicating when I've done it, what actions we're gonna take. Uh, I've just decided that we're gonna get a new vendor for this item. I add in those details. So I've now gone through a process where I first of all define what tests need to be taken. I've made those particular to a particular item. Uh, when it's received, I've now gone through the whole process of actually having had a rejection, and now I have an NC process to move through. Uh, I could also create a corrective action uh, process. 
uh, for that. Again, I'm not going to drill through this uh, for purpose of today's presentation, but we, we just had an NC. We could automatically generate uh, a corrective action process. Workflow is investigate, correct, prevent, and then validate it. Same thing in terms of that history. So hopefully you could see we've gone outside of the actual process of testing, inspecting an item into having a process that allows us to handle the non-conformance and COPPA process. So that's what the process would be for an item that's received. Let's talk about production a little bit. I'm gonna go into Bill's material. I'm gonna call up something called an exhaust. When you turn on QMS uh, for Acumatica in the manufacturing area, you can now see within the bill material structure, I call this the routing up on top. Uh, for each individual routing step, you can now associate a QC plan. Same thing we talked about at the item level, right? We have templates. We now go in and say we require inspection at this particular step. What is those inspections in terms of a test plan? Uh, you could see there is no test right here at operation 20. Uh, when we were in the item master file, you saw that there was a production test. In Acumatica, you could make an item in unlimited number of ways, number of different routings, bills of material. We made the decision that in most cases, people who do testing at the end of the assembly line are always going to do the testing the exact same way, regardless of how it was made. Uh, so we will trigger that test when this item is done. You'll see that in a few minutes. If for some reason testing needs to happen at Operation 20, or because it was made, uh, the testing are going to be different, then you would just indicate that at the final operation for when I make it this way, uh, the tests are going to be slightly different. I'm gonna go now and in, in, enter a production order for Acumatica. So I'm gonna enter an item, production order for this item called exhaust. And I'm gonna save this. I'm then going to release this in all standard production processes within Acumatica, it's allocating inventory, et cetera. I'm gonna to go to the move command next. Move within Acumatica says I'm done with operation 10 and I want someone to start operation 20. Um, this is the warning that I spoke about already, right? We're gating these, this is saying, nope, someone from QC needs to come over and look at a few things. So again, I'm gonna change hats and I'm gonna pretend I'm a quality control person. I can go to my dashboard in most clients' cases. The in-process person has a different dish pad than the, the person doing receiving. I was just alerted that I have to uh, do QC. I'm gonna enter in these results. For this purpose, I'm gonna pass these so we can move on. Uh, the failure aspect is exactly the same as others. So these have now passed. I'm gonna save this. I'm going to evaluate these results. Good news, it passed, that's what I was expecting. I'm gonna post those results. Posting is the accepting of these results. We don't need an inventory transaction because it's still in production. I'm gonna quickly drill back into this production order. Now going to go ahead and do a move. And this should now allow me to move this to the next operation. Again, it's back flushing labor, doing material transactions associated with that particular uh, operation, whatever you've defined within Acumatica. And now once that operation is done, uh, someone would have been alerted. I'm gonna go in again, do another move command because I'm now done with this. Notice it's in operation 20. I'm going to do a release. Again, this is where quality takes over. Uh, we wanna quarantine those items as they're going coming off the production line, should have been gone into the wholesale warehouse, should have gone into receiving, but now because this item needs to be quality inspected, uh, we are going to take that, put that in our particular quarantine location, and we're going to generate a QC order for purposes of putting this item into finished goods. Again, maybe there's some inline inspection uh, going on for this item. Uh, so rather than going changing hats and being the QC person, I'm going to move directly into this transaction and I'm gonna record these results, right? I'm gonna indicate that I had a value of one, this item is true, evaluate these results, 
again, have the capability of printing release labels, shipping uh, any type of label that I do need in terms of your process. Because these were accepted, I am going to go in and indicate, yep, I'm going to move those. I'm going to put those into the default inventory location for ERP. So that's how we handle work in progress inspections. Uh, the capability of, again, gating transactions and moving things through the process. There is shipping QC. I'm not going to go through uh, the entire shipping QC process, but just let you know where we interact with Acumatico in terms of creating a QC order uh, for shipping purposes. And I had not started the shipping process before, but I'm going to go in now on this particular order. Going to add a new order. And most people, when I do these live, know that I'm going to end up uh, saying that this customer is buying a shell. And I'm just going to buy one of these standard process within an ERP system, right? I just entered the order. And then within Acumatica, there's a process to create a shipment. So now we're alerting the doc uh, that this item is needs to be shipped and uh, things need to be done to get this item out. It is going through processes in terms of allocating and inventory, doing those transactions. I'm now at the shipping screen in Acumatica. The next thing I might want to do is I might want to confirm the shipment. Acumatica's language, I want to ship that out. You'll see that there's an error message coming out. Can't do this, right? This item needs to be QC'd, has QC shipping. So what will have to happen is someone will, we will automatically or someone will magically alert uh, QC that there's now inspection. Same process to go through in terms of inspecting the order, approving it, and then someone will be able to go back in and actually create uh, the shipment. Uh, this is all about, it's nice, all those transactions are handled, but it's all about information. So we have situations, right, of needing to create certificates of uh, conformance, going to print this report, right? We did that test that ended up in for that exhaust. These are all user defined. This is just a sample using the core uh, capabilities of Acumatica related to how forms could print. Some clients want specifications, some don't. Some want to show value, some don't. All of those are controllable both by our solution in terms of when we are generating these reports as well as the core Acumatica report writer. So we have those capabilities. Also pivot tables and analysis we've talked about are, are quite important, right? For the vendor analysis uh, capability that we have and the ability to do graphs and charts. So this is just an example of that for this particular exhaust system. If I scroll up a little bit, we have a complete analysis of, you could see how everything's passing. I'm always using the same values, but for this hardness test, what were the values? a record of when they were taken, what order was taken, what QC order, what sample it was, all the basis for analytics and some of the charts and graphs that you saw on my, my homepage. Recall uh, is important to uh, a variety of customers. Acumatic has the strong capability within its system dealing with lot and serial numbers, added some capability. So now someone has called up, uh, we have the shell item, and someone's indicated that on lot three, we've had an issue with that particular lot. It's a raw material, so I want to do forward traceability. It's now going to go through the system. It's going to analyze all the transactions uh, related to that particular item. And now I could see the report uh, going coming in, indicating where did we get this item, all the inventory movements that took place in the warehouse, moving it from bin to bin, because maybe this uh, something happened where this item was moved, is a frozen food item, and it was moved to the wrong warehouse. I could then see all the material issues, what jobs it went into, what finished goods it went into, with the end result of this particular item saying this was sold on two different orders for this finished good to those particular customers. 
We also have uh, backward traceability in a situation where someone might call in and indicate that they uh, bought this uh, crude item and they happen to buy our lot number two. I want, since this is a finished good, right, I want to do this going backwards. This is going to go through, uh, sample, search through all the database. I now know that that particular serial or lot number uh, was only sold to one person. And again, I have a complete history of all the different transfers, all the different raw material that might have went into that item. So again, traceability is an important piece of this. Um, a couple other items just to point out uh, is we've talked a lot about items um, and testing and analysis. A critical piece for some of our clients is uh, inspection processes. Um, so truck receipts is a prime example, right? We have a situation that we're in the food industry and whenever a truck arrives, uh, we need to test those items uh, coming off the truck to make certain they're compliant. But we also need to, because of our standard operating procedures, are in a situation of wanting to have a digital record a process where someone is going to be alerted that a truck just came in and they need to tell us from a bullion aspect whether the, the test was clean or not, and they need to record the temperature of the truck. So now we have a record of related to that receipt, what were the details, so now we've not only helped you from a QC aspect validate uh, that the items are acceptable, but they came in on an acceptable truck. Another example, if you saw on the menu of this particular situation, is we might have an oven set up, right? We're maybe centering metals, we're in a bakery shop, um, and before we start that manufacturing process, uh, someone needs to validate for us that was the oven clean, is the conveyor moving at the right speed? So we have the concept of tests and quality control plans to test items that, uh, at the item level, uh, that items are coming in, and then we have the concept of inspection plans uh, so that we can begin to test the processes uh, that might revolve around uh, particular applications. Uh, talked a little bit about NC already, but the process is set up so that I could have, as we alluded to in our graph, uh, an overview, uh, the capability to generate a, an NC uh, for whatever reason we would like to, right? We have the capability of identifying the profile. What item are we going to be looking at? And I want to, again, continue to look at uh, the shell item. I could create this and see for a particular lot number within the shell. Uh, I can begin to associate these with different departments. I could associate these with different categories of, of tests. I also have the capability of indicating priority level. Uh, if this had come in from a particular customer or vendor, I would also be able to link those in and have that information. So again, from an NC process, uh, it either gets integrated into our test plans uh, or it could be done on a standalone basis should we have a customer complaint. Same thing in terms of uh, CAFA transactions, we have the capability of creating a corrective action process uh, directly from the system. Again, typical things that people would like to see, right? I might have a particular priority uh, for this NC. Uh, most people want an owner who's responsible for this particular item or this particular NC, who we are gonna assign it to in terms of being responsible. How do we wanna categorize this? Again, came from a complaint handling situation. Uh, what type of was this? Was it from an NC or did it come from an audit transaction? And again, we could associate with departments and provide some start dates, reason codes, et cetera. So again, the COPPA and NC process uh, is integrated uh, both within the receiving process uh, as well as on a standalone process. Take a break. We're about 40, 45 minutes into this and we wanted to leave uh, some time for questions and additional insight. Um, any questions so far? Uh, Abwash, do you have anything else to add? We do have one question that's come in, Ralph. Are there some default QC dashboards available? Uh, yes. The, the dashboard uh, QC uh, that I'm going to pull up now 
is when the defaults as we're rolling out the product, we're continuing to enhance uh, and bring these uh, to specific individuals. So yes, you could use this as a default and we're creating more. And then you have the capability of creating these or your partner does uh, based upon their capabilities and knowledge of how to create dashboards within um, Acumatica. And we have another. What does the implementation process look like? Uh, the implementation process uh, looks like the following. Uh, is we will, first of all, have a kickoff meeting uh, where we want to make certain that we are on uh, the same page. We will then go through a discovery process. We will meet with various individuals, both in quality uh, as well as in operation to understand where those two exist. We will uh, gather information related to the types of tests that you take, when you take them, et cetera. Uh, we then uh, go and configure the system uh, as a conference room pilot. So we could then say, this is what we've discovered. This is what we understand your business to be. We will run you through transactions similar to what you saw today with your data uh, to validate that it's going to work. We then go through some fine tuning of that process to ensure it's correct. Uh, then we move into end user training um, and train individuals, and then we uh, are able to turn the switch on uh, in Move It Live. Uh, generally speaking, for an entity that has fairly good quality systems in place today, and maybe I shouldn't say systems as much as I should say they, they know the tests they want to perform, they have test plans, et cetera. Uh, in situations like that, the implementation uh, could be anywhere between 30 and 60 days uh, if Acumatic has already been implemented. Um, we do want entities uh, within the Acumatica world uh, to use a sandbox uh, when this particular uh, customization uh, is turned on. Uh, that way we could begin to go through all this testing and do all these things without disturbing uh, the operational environment. So that's how we handle the uh, the implementation as well as probably the next question was how long might something like this take and that looks like all the questions we have very good abolash you have anything else to add no i think you covered it well Raul. um i don't think uh, unless there is any more questions that i can answer i think you covered it well so i'm just going to go back to the powerpoint and i'm going to kind of circle back um to some of the the, the questions that we had or, or how we uh, laid this out in the beginning uh again most individuals have some firms have quality needs internally uh, particularly as it relates to the standard testing process standard records uh the ability to gate material uh, in that non-conformance process uh, hopefully you saw how you could do that vendor analysis you saw a few graphs and in, in that one pivot table uh, that the information is there. And again, we're beginning to continue to build out uh, some framework to do it. Custom requirements, most important. Hopefully you did see uh, how those could vary based upon the customer. And then from a regulatory compliance aspect, uh, the ability to do recall and traceability and the ability to have a digital record for not only the test, uh, but also the, um, the NC and COPPA processes. So hopefully you could see how what we just showed reverts back to why people in general are looking at QMS. And then the other piece uh, of the puzzle is making certain that we have a system within Acumatica that again, gets us within this framework so that we're in a situation of having a system within a system and we're not dealing with quality on the outside of this big matrix and quality is disconnected from the ERP system. So hopefully this was helpful, uh, beneficial. If you have any questions, uh, there's still a few minutes uh, available for us for Q&A as well as reach out to your Acumatica partner, and uh, we'll be happy to help out you and your Acumatica partner to uh, dive into some specific details related to your particular situation. Thank you, Ralph. And it looks like we have one more that's come through. What does cost look like for a manufacturing company? Um, uh, that, the costs vary. Uh, if you could ask that question to your uh, Acumatica business partner, it does vary, right? Acumatica has different sizes of uh, their manufacturing solutions. So the pricing will vary based upon 
uh, the, the transaction volume and exactly where you stand within Acumatica. So um, again, there's a published price list that's out on the portal. So. And I will add to that, uh, Ralph, is, uh, you know, uh, this is an extensive um, uh, quality control QMS application that includes uh, quality test, inspection, uh, NC, CAPA, uh, you know, there are multiple uh, uh, micro uh, modules uh, in there. So not all customers will need all these modules, right? So uh, if you don't use NC and CAPA, you don't have to get that. If certain customers who don't do manufacturing processes they only do the distribution side of it so they don't have to implement the manufacturing portion so it totally depends on uh, what the use cases are and accordingly we can choose certain functions of qms wonderful and that looks like all the questions we have very good so i think it there's a thank you slide uh, and again we very much appreciate for the time, hopefully this was informative, uh, not only as it relates to QC in general, what systems need to do, but how also it could apply within the Acumatica framework. And we appreciate and enjoy the working relationship we have with SWK. Thank you so much, Ralph and Abalash, for your informative presentation, for taking the time to be here today. And thank you everyone for attending our webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your day.